Hello, and welcome to another session of uh, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. Our program, a collaboration of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter, uh, known as the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Our cases uh, most often come from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And today's case is uh, highlighted from uh, the Children's Hospital, uh, here seen at Christmas time, uh, with its uh, iconic uh, atrium and uh, entryway with uh, whimsical kites and uh, lights at night. So uh, the case is that of a 23-year-old woman who has delivered a female child at 32 weeks gestation, so a little bit preterm. Child's APGAR scores were five and seven um, and was small for gestational age, but no significant anomalies. However, this child did have thrombocytopenia. The placenta was sent for examination, was found to be 1,300 grams, and noted to have an intraparenchymal mass nine centimeters in size. So sections of that mass are uh, the highlight for our case review today. Uh, and here we can sort of orient ourselves to see the uh, placental maternal pl uh, fetal plate, its fetal surface up here, uh, larger vessels, and a little bit of uh, normal placental parenchyma with this uh, quite cellular mass. So we'll just take a look here at uh, some of the uh, uh, placental uh, tissue, noting that we have some perivillous fibrin, uh, some calcifications, um, and uh, a lot of very small villi uh, surrounding uh, this uh, lesion. Moving over onto the lesion itself, we see that we have a mixture of vessel sizes, some intermediate uh, sized vessels, some stem vessels, and some smaller branches. And then this intervening tissue uh, which itself appears to be quite vascular, have a lot of uh, small uh, vessels, uh, as we can see, very uh, capillary sized and intermediate sized, um, no normal uh, villus structure uh, here, no uh, um, maternal type circulation involving uh, this uh, tissue. So a vascular neoplasm, uh, morphologically, a mixture of vessel sizes, cytologically, fairly bland and uniform. So the differential diagnosis for these vascular neoplasms uh, occurs as uh, several possibilities. We might think of uh, uh, chorangiosis or chorangioma uh, or chorangiomatosis, some of those sorts of lesions. Um, and uh, Choriangiomatosis occurs primarily in two uh, forms, a localized form, which was probably what we would think of in this case, uh, versus a diffuse and multifocal uh, form. However, uh, choriangioma is by far the most uh, frequent of these entities, occurring, at least by some reports, in up to 1% of uh, uh, pregnancies. Uh, here we can see that this can be detected uh, prenatally in the form of a uh, hypoechoic uh, 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 lesion uh, involving the uh, placenta here, uh, seen on a, a prenatal ultrasound. And uh, as these lesions become larger, uh, they're more likely to become associated with uh, things like preeclampsia or preterm uh, labor and birth. Um, and uh, even more significantly, as they become larger, uh, they can result in significant uh, AV shunting that may result in polyhydramnios or hydropsphetalis, <clears throat> even occasionally fetal death um, in the case of these very large lesions. Uh, fetal cardiomegaly, of course, may be a, a result of the AV shunting um, and the hypoxemia that by bypasses maternal circulation uh, in the, uh, the placenta here uh, may result in significant fetal hypoxia uh, as well. And that in turn then can lead to uh, plat platelet sequestration and other uh, issues such as our uh, baby encountered. Uh, interestingly, these uh, lesions are more frequently seen in patients living at high altitude. And so uh, possibly this uh, oxygenation issue is not just a an effect of the lesion, but may be related uh, to other sensors in the placental stem villi vasculature. Um, here's another lesion, I think, to contrast with this lesion. Um, notice that here we seem to be located 
uh, in the submembranous tissue. Uh, but notice that in this case, uh, we have a lot of very collagenous uh, tissue here. Uh, we do have small vessels and intermediate sized vessels. And so this may be a chorangioma with a slightly different morphology, more collagenization and localized. But the extent of collagenization here uh, would raise uh, consideration of the uh, uh, diffuse um, chorangiomatosis, uh, which is associated with significant collagenization. So this is the differential differentiation. Chorangiomatosis localized is uh, usually not uh, identified grossly. It's usually a microscopic finding. Um, but again, some of the same outcomes in terms of preeclampsia, preterm birth, and so forth, related to the size and extent of these lesions. The diffuse multifocal chorangiomatosis uh, is associated with this very dense collagen and pericytic growth, uh, but that is involving villi throughout the placenta. It's uh, not a localized uh, phenomenon in most cases, and this is uh, rather rare. Uh, choriangiosis is, uh, again, a microscopic description based on uh, numbers of uh, capillaries and so forth, uh, and I won't spend a lot of time on that. And then the less uh, frequent lesions would be metastatic tumors, vascular tumors, uh, and so forth. So the diagnosis on our case today is uh, that of choriangioma involving the placenta uh, with the secondary impact on the, on the child in terms of uh, prenatal, or excuse me, uh, preterm birth, uh, small for gestational age, potentially due to the vascular shunting involved, um, and thrombocytopenia. Well, I hope that's uh, brought this a little bit into light. Uh, if you'd like to look over the slides, please check the link in the description below. Uh, we hope you'll subscribe and uh, share this with uh, friends and colleagues. We welcome your feedback and look forward to spending some time with you again uh, on some similar uh, challenging and uh, interesting uh, digital slide cases.